Hey everybody, Senior G here, and this is the video for factoring polynomials part two. And what we're going to be doing in this video is, if one, if you have not seen part one, please go back and watch that video first, because you will need to know all the skills that were taught in that video, in, in that lesson, in order to be able to be successful in this one. So what we're going to be doing is we're still going to be factoring trinomials, but we're going to make them a little bit more complicated. So before what we did when we were factoring trinomials is we had something like this, x squared plus 11x plus 18. We found the common, we found the factors of the constant, such as 9 and 2, because 9 times 2 is 18. And we were looking for the factors that when I add them up, they're going to equal the middle number here. So 9, so 11, x squared plus 11x plus 18 factors out to x plus 9 times x plus 2, because 9 times 2 is 18, and 9 plus 2 is 11. So this was my factorization. So the question I have for you is what if we have a value, what if we have a value in front of x squared? So I have something in front of my x squared now, because all the ones that we did before, there's nothing here. Well, what if I have something like this? There's 2x squared in front. That's when the process is going to become a little bit more complicated. So the first thing I want us to do, whenever we have a leading coefficient, what I want us to do is I want us to actually see, well, can I actually divide everything by that leading coefficient? Okay, so is this, is this, a, is this leading coefficient a factor of all of my terms? So if I look at 2a squared plus 12a plus 16, can I just factor out a 2 to get rid of the leading coefficient, and then I can factor out like we did normally? So can I do divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2? And the answer is yes, I can. I, I, can, I can do that. So when I take out my 2, I have, when I factor out 2, I still have my a squared. I still have 6a, and I still have, and I have an 8. And all, so it's like backwards distributive property. I'm just dividing all these by 2. I'm factoring out a 2. Now what I can do is I can just do what we've done in part one of, of factoring polynomials, is I can factor a squared plus 6a plus 8. So a squared plus 6a plus 8, what, come, what are the factors of 8? So if I'm looking for factors of 8, I know I have 8 and 1, I have 4 and 2, and I want to look at the sum of the factors, which is 6 and 9. Well, I want 6 here. So it's a plus 4, a plus 2, and all of this is being multiplied by 2, we're good to go. Okay, and we can also even distribute this 2 back in if we wanted to, to have 2a plus 8 times a plus 2. Okay, and I'm all done. Let's look at another one like it. So I have 3x squared minus 30x plus 48. I want to ask myself, okay, well, can I factor out this 3? Are all these divisible by 3? Can I do divide by 3? divide by 3, and divide by 3, and just get rid of that coefficient, that leading coefficient. So I factor out a 3, I'd have x squared minus 10x, and this is 16. They're all factors of 3, so it works. Now I can just factor out this. I have a negative number on the inside, so I need to have negative numbers for my factors, of factors of 16. So I'd have negative 8, negative 2, because negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. And their sum is negative 10, so I have x minus 8, x minus 2 times 3, and then I can redistribute this back in to give me 3x minus 24, x minus 2. And this would be my final answer. So first we just want to check, can I just is the leading coefficient a factor of all of them? Can I factor that out? Then do everything we learned from video part, part video bleh, from factoring polynomials video one. And just go from there and then redistribute back. Now we're going to look at something even more complicated, and that is, well, what if I can't just factor out this leading coefficient? So I have 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. I cannot divide 7 and 3 by 2. I'll have fractions, and that makes an entire, that makes a huge mess. So these negative 7, 2 is not a factor of negative 7 and 3. So now what I need to do is I need to use a chart that looks something like this. So first, my first thing is I need to find factors of 2, my leading coefficient. Well, factors of 2 are just 2 and 1. Those are the only possibilities. Next, we need to do what we did before, and we need to find the factors of my constant, 3. Well, 3 and 1 are my only possibilities. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out, well, what is a possible factorization? So what's a possible answer here? And then I'm going to guess, and then I'm going to, then I'm going to check those possibilities. So this 2 and this 1, so before we would just have x and x, and then we would have plus, minus stuff in here. Okay, so what I want to do 
is I need to actually add what well, my factors of two are. They need to be my leading coefficients here in my parentheses. So I have a 2x now and then a 1x over here. And then I also need to double check my factors of 3 real quick because if we notice, 3 and 1 are factors of 3, but my middle number here, this is negative. So I'm probably going to need a negative 3 times a negative 1 because negative 3 times a negative is positive 3, but it's going to help give me a negative when I combine them. So what I want to do is I want to check the possibilities, but there's going to be more than just one possibility. So I have negative 3 and negative 1 here. But the problem is because I have, a lead, I, have a, I have a 2 in front of this x here, that means I can switch the order of the negative 1 and the negative 3. The order matters on which order I put these in now. So I could also have 2x minus 1 and x minus 3. These would yield two different answers. And the way I'm going to know which one's correct is I'm just going to see what my middle term is going to be when I multiply this out. So I know if I did 2x times x, I'll get 2x squared. So that, that's, that's the easy part. But when I get 2x minus 1, I'll have minus 2x, negative 3 times x, negative 3x. Okay, is that going to give me negative 7x? No, this gives me negative 5x. If I do 2x times negative 3, I'll get negative 6x. Negative 1 times x will give me negative x. This combined will give me negative 7x. So this means this is my answer right here. So my answer is 2x minus 1, x minus 3. So first we find our possible factors, and then what we have to do is we actually have to find our possible factorizations. We have to check to see what that middle term is going to be based on the order that we placed our factors of our constant. Okay, so we do have to check. So sometimes we won't get it right the first time. We do have to check our answers in this one. So let's look at a separate one so we can see another example of this. So I have 3x squared plus 14x minus 5. So first, I want to find my factors of 3, which are just 3 and 1. Now I need to find my factors of negative 5. Well, the factors of negative 5 are negative 5 and 1, and they're also positive 5, negative 1. Okay, so these are my possible factors. So now I've got to figure out possible factorizations here. Well, I'm going to have a 3x, and I'm going to have an x, so I know that. Okay, so for the two possible factorizations, I'm going to have 3x, and I'm going to have an x, just for the negative 5 and 1. So now I need to... Now my order matters. So I have negative 5, positive 1, and we'll do positive 1, negative 5. So we'll just switch it around, and then we're going to check to see what my middle terms are. Well, let's look at my possibilities for 5 and negative 1. So again, I'm going to have 3x and then the x, 3x, and then my x. But now I need to have positive 5, negative 1, and I could also have negative 1, positive 5. And I need to multiply my, and check to see what my middle numbers are. My, when I multiply and combine, I need to figure out what my middle term is. So 3x times positive 1 is going to give me positive 3x minus 5x. This is going to be negative 2. This does not work. Okay, so it's not this one. 3x times negative 5 will give me negative 15x plus x. This is going to give me negative 14, not positive 14, so this one does not work either. Okay, 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. 5 times x will give me positive 5x. This just gives me 2x. This will not work. Okay, finally I have 3x plus 5x. Hopefully this one will work. 3x plus 5x will give me 15x. Negative 1 times x negative x. That's going to give me positive 14x. This is my answer. So my final answer is 3x minus 1, x plus 5. Sometimes there are a lot of possibilities. We have to check a lot until we figure it out, but that's, that's the process of which this works. One more example, and then we'll be done with the video. So first I need to find factors of 4. I'm going to have multiple possibilities now, because now I've got 4 and 1, and I also have 2 and 2. So we have a lot to check with this one. Factors of positive 5 with a negative number. Well, at least I only have one possibility here. This is negative 5, negative 1. And the reason why I chose negative 5 and negative 1 because my middle term is negative. So first we're going to try with our 4x and x. So I know I have to do two possibilities because the order matters. Okay, so I'll do negative 5 here and then negative 1, and then I'll do negative 1 here and negative 5. So I'm just swapping them up. 
Now I also need to try the possibilities with 2 and 2. Okay, so with 2 and 2, I'll have 2x, 2x, and then I can check negative 5, negative 1. The order does not matter because this is 2x minus 5, 2x minus 1. If I switch, I'm still going to have 2x minus 1 and 2x minus 5. So the order doesn't matter when I have both of my factors are the exact same number. So I just have 3 to check here, which is kind of nice. So now we just check to see our middle term, what our middle term is when we multiply. So 4x minus 1 is negative 4x, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, and look at that, first try, because that equals negative 9x, which is what we're looking for. So even though I wrote out all the possibilities that I didn't even need, and my first one was actually the correct one, I'm all done. So we got a little lucky on that one. Okay, You don't really need to check these, because they will not work out. Okay, and that's all I have for you guys. Okay, that's it. So for this, for these problems, what I want you guys, what you guys need to do is just you need to find your factors of your constant, find your factors of your constant and find the factors of the leading coefficient and then check the possibilities. Make sure you include all possibilities and then check the middle term when you multiply them. And if you do that, you will find success. Okay, I hope this video helped. Good luck. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.